Hi everyone. Okay, so this is an update video on how I'm feeling, where I'm at in terms of of grief and the children and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's just over a month on since Ross died and we're doing okay. Probably better, no, we're doing better than okay. Um, we're getting ready to move house. Um, we're building an extension and it's all a bit chaotic so we've been here and we, we've just got a new car and we, you know, kids will go back to school tomorrow so lots is happening and the children are going to a new school so that's all really fresh. Um, yeah, and I feel good, like I think that's, it's often weird for people and I know I've said this on posts before, um, it's often weird for people to understand that but it is what it is. Like I'm just trying to to let stuff be. And obviously there's moments now and then when I'm like getting caught off guard and something will upset me. Yesterday something set me off a little bit for a minute. Um, but then we had a little cuddle, me and the kids, and, and we were okay. And I also wanted to touch on how I have dealt with talking to the children. So for those of you that follow me who are going through the same thing and those numbers are way bigger than... I guess I anticipated and would expect. My inboxes on every single platform across social media are full and I'm doing my best to message everybody back but it, they're really full and it's from people who are going through a similar thing and want to know how do I talk to my children about my partner or me dying or having ill health or being given a big diagnosis. How do I tell my children that my someone that we love has died? And that's firstly a really, really tough thing for you to have to do. I can't pretend that it has been easy or is easy because it's really not. I did a video on here when we knew that Ross was going to die. It was a guidance video which you can find, I'll link up at the end of this. And that was intended for those around us to be prepared for what we had said to the children and what the children were likely to say to them. Because normally, the reality is children will respond how they feel they want to respond. They don't have the social norms we do. So they just cry or scream or bite or whatever whatever makes them feel good in that moment. Um, and they say what their truth is out loud. And it's actually us adults who go, oh, whoa, whoa. Why is this child asking these questions and making me feel uncomfortable? And what we as a family have had to do since the very beginning is go, we tell the truth. we got to be real. I and my husband, Ross, always lived our lives like that. With the children, we always said we treat them like little adults in many ways. We speak to them properly. We've never, you know, allowed them to say cuggle instead of cuddle or, you know, daft things like that. We've always kind of been real with them obviously in a child friendly way and all that but we you know we we want we want it to be truthful and we have been from the start and that has made it easier because i have said to the children i'm not going to lie to you i won't lie to you that doesn't mean that it can't be done in a child friendly way but i've never lied and i will always be as honest as possible and that means that the conversations can often be dark very hard to have and for me personally, sometimes inside I'm going, holy shit, I wasn't ready to confront that yet, but I've got to. I've got to confront it because they need to confront it and I'm leading the way. So from the beginning, when Ross was in the hospice, you know, obviously before that we told him, they then, children don't really understand, not at the age mine are, six and four, a uh, timeline doesn't really make sense to them. So they had no idea that it was going to be as soon as it was. Obviously, I could never, I didn't lie to them. I said, we don't know, which is the truth. We didn't know when it was going to be. Um, when he was in the hospice, Brooke said, will daddy come home? And I said, no, I don't think so. Which again was the truth. Will daddy die here? Yes, I think so. Which again was the truth. And that's what happened. And so that allows Brooke and Texas to know that they can trust mom because she didn't lie. She told the truth. Even when she was scared, even when she was crying, she told the truth. And when Ross came home, they knew that that meant that he had died. And I told them anyway. And I, from the start, thought 
this is now not about me for this moment. It's not that I can't cry or any of those things or grieve, but I need to let them know that they are safe and secure, safe and secure, safe and secure. And that is something that is in my head every day. Make them feel safe and secure. Because for them now, their world has been shook in a way that I've never experienced. I've not experienced that kind of unnerving, unsettling family life. I didn't have that as a child. I had my mom and dad there. And so for them, it's suddenly learning that actually people can be taken away. And I've had to learn massively on how to help them because I didn't go through that. And my main thing has been that they feel really unsettled. And again, we're moving everything, new school, new car, new house. It's we, We've done it all in one go, which could be hard, could be better. You know, it, it could be a, a fresh start. I think it will be. And we'll I'll certainly have pitched it in that way to the children. But they will ask every day. They will say things like, um, are you going to die, mommy? Or um, Texas asks me a lot, am I breathing? Um, they ask, you know, they'll cry for Ross. They will say when they when when Texas gets told off, she's now saying, I want daddy. And I know it's not that she wants Ross in that moment, it's that she doesn't want to be told off. And you know, for another for another person that might really derail them, I knew that that is was gonna come and I'm sure there will be more. I'm sure there will be I wish you died and not daddy. I'm sure that will come. I'm sure in temper because children say things because they're sad and they don't have a filter like we do. Um and that can be harder on the adults than it is on the children. I am finding that the children are very, very sensitive. Texas particularly is clingy, crying and really sensitive. Um, and I guess we've just got to ride that out. They're not going to, it's not going to not touch them. And that's what you've got to remember. Brooke is playing up all the time, you know, just testing and testing and testing those boundaries. And sometimes I'm biting which is hard and then other times I'm taking myself for a time out and most of the time I'm just trying to when she's doing it I'm trying to give her tools so I'm saying to her I'm saying it's okay to be angry it's okay to have negative emotions it's okay to feel cross but it's it's not okay to hit your sister or to throw something on the floor or to be rude to me that's not okay at all and you need to find another way to deal with it. So whether you go run around in the garden, whether you rip some paper up, whether you punch your pillow, scream into a pillow, whatever it is, these are techniques that we've been using and, and they've been really useful. And whatever it is, I'm saying these are fine. It's okay to have these emotions because I sometimes feel angry. I sometimes feel upset or I feel this. And none of these are wrong, but it's how we deal with them that makes you know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing and that's what you need to be saying to your children I think the main advice that I can really say is is keep the dialogue open and remember that when they're playing up it's coming from a place of feeling really unsettled and you know what as adults we play up as well you know might not come out in the same way we might mask it better but but we play up and we feel all the same emotions it's just that they do it in a more honest way and we just have to respect them as people and understand that they are going through those same things. I spoke on the last video about Brooke saying she felt overwhelmed, that she felt too many things going on. And I, I think that's what's happening. But what I have tried to do is allow them to ask any question that they want. And that means that I have to hear things that sometimes I don't want to hear. Or maybe I'm not in a place to, you know, to listen to at that moment. So it could be, you know, who was there when Ross died, who how did you know he had died um, what did he look like um, we've got to talk about cremation and what happens in the body and the color of his skin and did he have a smell and did he say anything and does he still love me can he come back um, do you have to take your wedding ring off now that one got me um, well Brooke said on my wedding ring I've got three diamonds my uncle made it my uncle and my cousin are jewelers and my uncle made it's nothing fancy three diamonds um you know quite a plain ring and I've always said to the girls one's for you one's for daddy one's for you know, one's for Tex, one's for Brooke one's for daddy um and so Brooke asked me whether I have to take the stone out for Ross and I'm not gonna lie that got me I wasn't ready for it and I cried a bit and I said 
no darling I don't have to do that because no matter what happens in my life going forward daddy is a significant part of my life and always will be no matter what like he you know it's he it's gonna get me now and that those those ones that you you don't expect because children think differently to us as adults those ones kind of take us by surprise and my advice would just be just be honest and if you need to cry in that moment then cry and and be honest with why you're crying and it's not that they've done anything wrong it's just that you think hey yeah you know like I feel sad too and we just say to each other in the house we'll say I'm having a bit of a moment I just need a moment and yesterday I felt I had a moment in the kitchen I would, something got me and um I got a little bit upset while I was making the food and, and the girls clocked it and I wasn't trying to hide it but I just it weren't in that place so and then this Brooke said but I'm, I'm upset mum now I'm upset because you're upset not because I was having a moment and I said okay just give me a cuddle then it's fine you're not in a, you don't have to feel sad about dad in that moment because you're not in that space and that's okay and we just respect each other when when someone's having a bad moment we give them a cuddle and when someone's having you know we respect that we're all going through different emotions and I think that's all we can really do and, and I just think honesty is the best policy don't be scared of the, the conversation sometimes you have to almost detach from what you're saying you know, sometimes the conversation, you know, having to have a conversation about Ross in the hospice dying isn't ideal for me, like, but I have to detach from it and give the girls what they need, what they need to hear. And I'm lucky enough that I've got a good lot of people around me and, and some of Ross's friends, um, I said to the girls that if they ever need boy chat, they've got Ross's brother, they've got Ross's cousins and his business partner and his friends and, um, they can give them a call and the lads have been amazing and, and when the girls have needed it they've given some of the lads a call and just had a chat on the phone and because I'm I'm not a bloke you know and sometimes you need to have a boy chat and you you, you, you know it's it's nice to have those lads around who love love their dad as well and and are supporting them and care for them as well so we have that and you know every day is different but right now they're not crying every time they go to sleep which is positive most of the time we're forward thinking we are talking about Ross all of the time like you know I'm not shying away I'm not pretending that I'm not like trying to strike him out that's the opposite you know today we've went shopping we see owls everywhere he's a chef of Wednesday he was a chef of Wednesday fan so I'll say oh daddy would love that wouldn't he oh do you reckon dad would have liked that or dad used to do this or dad taught me this or dad whatever we're having those conversations because he is around us he is within us because he's in our hearts and that's what the girls need to know and I think that's all you can do and I wish everybody that is going through this massive massive love and support and good luck and and do your thing and be brave and I will be talking about this as honestly as possible over the the next few months and I hope that you get something from it and I do love hearing from you I will get back to men, as many of you as I can really soon I'll speak to you all soon I can feel your heart pounding like a kick